Welcome back to Sports Federation TV, the show where we chat about a range of different codes of sport brought to you by the Western Cape Provincial Sport Confederation. My name is Alton Davids. As you know, it's the month of celebrating ladies. It is August. We thought we'd showcase one of the ladies who's made an impact in sport across Cape Town and across the Western Cape and certainly across the country, but definitely internationally as well. Genevieve Lenz, are you well? I'm well, thank you. Yourself? Good. All good. All good. A young lady that's been involved in table tennis for how many years? Sure, since since high school, I suppose since primary school actually. Um, but I uh, joined up with the club in 1999. Um, yeah, and I've been involved in club table tennis ever since. So, so are you a player? Where do you fit into the big scheme of things? Have you su succeeded as to represent South Africa as a player? What do you do that makes? I wish I was a player. <laughs> no, I uh, yeah, I started obviously as a player, um, but I was more interested in officiating. Um, so I wrote the exams, uh, umpiring exams, and in 2006 I qualified as an international umpire. And since then I went on to write um, the advanced umpires exam in 2009 in Japan at the World Championships. And um, that basically started my journey as a blue badge umpire. So what's a blue badge umpire? What does that mean? Well, the blue badge umpire is, the, uh, is a group of umpires who are, are seen as being the elite umpires and they are eligible for um, selection to officiate at the Olympics. So not everybody's allowed to officiate at the Olympics. And how many blue badge umpires are there in the world? Gosh, uh, the list is, is, is quite long. Okay, They're so not, there's not many in Africa. Um, there's quite, uh, there's, it's few, um, uh, and obviously uh, around the world there's much more. Yeah. So, so how do we fit in as, as South Africa and Africa in terms of the technical components? Are we ranked high up in terms of expertise or, or how does it work? Do you get that kind of ranking? Um, there's no specific ranking in, as in terms, are you talking about the technical as in officials? And as in not officials, as, as in do we, do we officiate in lots of international competition as, as South Africans and as Africans? Not really. Um, I suppose in the last, for the past three, four years, um, we've had more exposure. Um, obviously as umpires, yes, for the, we've been umpiring internationally. But because there's not enough funding, um, the SATTB cannot send out umpires as often as they would like to. Mm. And so mostly they uh, place importance on um, the umpires who are doing who are white badges, yep. who are looking to become blue badges, um, getting them qualified, sending them out because you need to be evaluated at international championships. So you need um, good evaluation. So you can pick up about two good evaluations at one international tournament. Um, and you need four good evaluations before you get qualified as a blue badge umpire. Okay, so, so you talk about a white and a blue badge. So, so I'm, I'm, I start umpiring and I start at club level. I then go into Cape Town space, I then go into Western Cape space, then I become a national umpire. When do I start moving into become a, a white badge or is there something in between? How does that all fit together? Yeah, so you become a national umpire and every second year internationally, the international exams get written in the same month, which is usually in May. In May. Um, and there you can qualify as an international umpire. So um, after becoming an international umpire, obviously you are um, then able to uh, officiate at international games. Um, after that, you have to write the advanced uh, umpire's exam if you want to pursue a career as, a, you further your umpiring career as a blue badge umpire. But like I said, again, you must be um, your, 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 your national bodies or the associations must be able to can send you to these, um, these international tournaments. Um, what happens internationally is that uh, umpires have the freedom to apply to any international okay. tournament because they're funding their own, their own flights mm. and, and those sort of things. But uh, we're quite privileged, um, but also limited in a way that um, our national body pays for our flights and so they choose which tournaments international they'll send us to. So we cannot choose if we, for instance, we can be invited to um, a ger the German Open, but at the end of the day, the um, national body will decide whether we'll go. Internationally, umpires, like I said, they can choose, uh, they can look at the calendar which comes out every year 
and they can choose which tournaments, uh, international tournaments, they want to go to uh, throughout the year. And predominantly, most of these tournaments are in, are in Europe be because that's where the bulk of the Europe, Asia, uh, across yeah, that space. Predominantly. Uh, and I think that's what makes it worse is that it's, uh, it's over there and it's quite uh, costly to send mm. our umpires uh, to Europe and to Asia um, and uh, to officiate there. So, so let's take a step back. Now that you're a blue badge, what, is, what doors have opened for you across, across the space? Well, I got the privilege of um, umpiring at the Olympics in the same year that I, was, um, that I qualified as a blue badge umpire. Where, um, when was that? 2012 at the sure. London Olympics. Yeah. Um, so how, I, how, how was that first experience? It was a goosebump experience. Um, you know, it, it really it was just to sit amongst to, to sit amongst the elite athletes, and to know that that is what every athlete aspires to. And it's not something that I planned. Mm. Um, some kids have these dreams of of um, of reaching the Olympics as, as young players. Uh, I never had that sort of dream. It just kind of happened. I yeah. happened to be in the right space at the right time. Um, and be passionate about what, what about my sport and then pursue it. So uh, those opportunities and then the, the from all sorts of opportunities uh, open, I started um, refereeing as well yeah, locally. Um, and then in 2015, I went to write my national referee exams in Sudan. Um, and in 2017, I qualified as an international referee. So lots of doors have opened. Um, and uh, I've quite been quite blessed in, in that regard. So, London and then you went to where else? Yeah, so, so London, uh, London and um, I obviously went to Beijing Olympics just after I qualified as an international umpire. I qualified in 2006, as I said. 2008, I was sent to uh, the Beijing Paralympics. I was obviously in awe and, and to see these uh, para players play is just amazing. Mm -hmm. um, there's really no words to describe and, and, and then also you, you come to appreciate life and the fact that you have all your limbs and, and you're, I, I think in a way, sad in that there are people out there who don't do anything um, and that have all their limbs. Mm. Um, so yes, yeah, so 2008 and then 2012 was the Olympics. I've obviously been to various world championships um, and yeah, I've been to uh, the African championships and then started my first uh, my first referee stint in Ghana this year. And what was that like being a getting an upgrade from an umpire to a referee? Yeah, an international a, competition. It's definitely a different space, different mindset. Uh, comes with its own sorts of challenges. Um, but I think um, being spo being exposed to the African tournament. Uh, was the best thing that could have happened uh, for me in, in terms of my experience. Um, I loved it. I, I'm glad that I, I got the chance to go to an African tournament and not be a European tournament because we might not be fully resourced as uh, the Europeans are. Mm. So there were some challenges, but uh, I'm glad that I got to do it on my own continent. Um, so it was a great experience, yes. What happened after that? Okay. Where did you go after that? Uh, is this your full-time job firstly? Because <laughs> it seems like it's only you, 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 everything you do is around table tennis. Yeah, I wish it was my full-time job. Unfortunately not. I am by profession uh, a lecturer, an English lecturer. I uh, lecture education students. Um, now, I obviously, I have to take leave. I, I think I'm uh, privileged in the, in the fact that um, I can take national um, leave um, because our institution recognizes the sport. Mm. Um, so I had to take specially for um, the Ghana specifically and um, recently I came from Italy where I was a uh, deputy referee at the um, university games and luckily it fell within our holidays so I didn't have to take leave there. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and what was that experience like? I mean going from from Ghana to to Europe into from a, a national, international competition to a student games? Has it been your first student games experience? Yeah, th this was my first international student games. Um, certainly also um, a different, different setting comes with different set of challenges. But I think every, um, every experience was a learning experience. Uh, this one specifically, I got um, more exposure. Um, I was given more responsibilities. And I definitely learned so much from my peers and the referee that was there. I was familiar with him because 
he was a deputy referee in London um, at the London Olympics as well. Mm. Um, and so, yes, they share the, the knowledge, they share the experience, and uh, we learn from that. What's next? Uh, next is next week to off to Nigeria for the uh, Nigerian Open. Um, I'll be there for six days. Um, later this year, I go to the uh, the World um, World Cup, the Table Tennis World Cup in Japan and Thailand. Uh, and then next year, it's Olympics. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And fr from a woman's perspective, you've you've achieved all of this. How does it make you feel, and how do you think it can impact women locally? Because Table tennis is not a big sport, yet you've excelled and you've gone to represent South Africa at the Olympics, as a, although a technical official, but you've been through the highest level. How, what message can you give to the ladies out there, seeing it's Women's Month? Yeah, I think um, it's been an amazing journey, um, especially because I am a female and it is predominantly a male-dominated sport, although there are girls and women playing. Um, and I think the fact that I've gotten this far um, is definitely, in, it, it, I hope it is inspirational. It has been, um, uh, recently we had a blue badge umpire, para blue badge umpire, female qualify. Nice. And um, when I thanked her, mm. she said to me, but you, you were my inspiration. And then you kind of get shocked because you don't really know and you don't think that you impact people's lives, but they see your journey. Mm. And, they, and, and because you've done it as a female, it kind of gives them the mo motivation to continue and pursue their dreams um, and reach the highest level. So my, my message to, to females and to women are to pursue your dreams. And, and there's so many opportunities. And to take hold of those opportunities, don't stand back for anyone, mm. um, not your, your male counterparts or anybody, because you're just as good, you're good enough. And how do you balance having a full-time job, table tennis, and everything else? Because cause often that's a big challenge for, for women. Mm -hmm. um, you, you talk to anybody about playing sport, they say, we can't get involved because it, we have the maternal commitments that we need to do. We need to keep, sort the kids out, dinner, all of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Give us some, one of the two tips that, that, that makes your life kind of balanced and successful to get to this point. Yeah, I think that is um, a bit of a... A uh, challenge uh, for women, especially because you have these maternal responsibilities. Mm. Fortunately for me, I I don't have that many responsibilities, although I do have um, some um, kind of responsibility. I think it's just to plan well, um, and and then also I think if you're in a relationship or you are married, you kind of have to um, come to some sort of an agreement, you know, and then also. One has to make sacrifices, and, and from both sides, I, I think that is just fair. If, uh, if your husband is allowed to play sport, why are you not allowed to play sport? So find the balance, um, and then plan, and uh, the rest will just fall in place. Um, uh, that's, what, that's what's happened for me. Um, sometimes days are crazy. Uh, sometimes I have to sit back, take a breath, and then just think, how did mm. this all happen? Mm. But uh, ultimately, if your heart's in the right place, and um, you plan well, you can get it done. The rest of this year seems like a busy year. Mm -hmm. Do you have goals going forward? As a, what's the next level post, post end of this year from a table tennis point of view? Well, I suppose um, it's to focus on, currently I'm the um, Cape Town table tennis uh, umpires convener. And my uh, role is to promote umpires um, to do courses with umpires, to get them qualified, um, to make sure that umpires are doing duty to track them and, um, and all those sort of things. So I think my for going forward is to get more umpires qualified, more women involved specifically, um, yeah, and then also encourage them not only to be umpires, but to go further than that and become referees as well. So that is basically what I'd like to focus on. Um, pers from a personal point of view, I think I want to gain as much experience as I can. We have the Nationals coming up in September, where I'll be the referee as well out in Oatsall. So I'd like to gain as much experience and learn from others, those that are, that are in the know, those that have the experience, learn from them, and then just hone my skill and become a better referee.
everybody's dream is to improve every single day. That's if we're not improving, then we're doing something wrong. Yeah. In closing, how do we take a message to Joe Public to be involved in sport A and B, promote and, and level the bar and break down the barriers, uh, gender barriers specifically? I think if you want to reach the public, um, we need to obviously go out in public spaces. Um, and, and the sad thing is that in our local communities is that sport is not being promoted as what it was before. So that's where we need to work. We need to go back to schools. We need to encourage school sport. We need to encourage community um, sport. What's happening in the community halls? Or where is the sport going to? You mm. know? Um, once we do that, we're going to be reaching the public. And we need to promote it um, as far as possible. You know, my, my uh, victories or my achievements is not my own. It is for the sport as a, as a whole. And so we need to promote as far as, as we can and get involved. Because we always think it's someone else's responsibility. That person can be a coach. That person can be an umpire. But what about, what can I do for, mm. for the sport? So um, get involved. Get involved and be an international umpire and referee <laughs> at some point. That's the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> all the best for your travels this year. Thank you. Um, all the many that you'll be doing <laughs> from what you've highlighted. And I'm sure there'll probably be a lot more that will come along. All the best and thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Let's take an ad break. We'll be right back with another lady interview. See you now.